This is Torpedoman Second Class Claude Richmond Still, who served during World War II aboard the USS Otis in the Pacific, but I only knew him as Pop Pop. He had an exceptional talent for gardening, could probably grow you a blue tomato if you wanted one, and one day he planted a walnut tree. That tree stood at the house I grew up in until 2022, and I have all of it here. That giant flag in the background of my videos is his casket flag. It was cool being there with me in the shop, but I don't really like it getting so dusty, so I'm gonna build it a proper case from that tree he planted. And don't worry, it's not gonna be your typical triangle case which floods the Google image search for flag box. See, I use Google to get inspiration, but I have to be careful. That's because if I see something that someone else has already made, then I kind of don't wanna make it. That's why I hate plans and instructions. I want everything I make to be an original prototype from my brain with only abstract influence from the internet. And I'm not bashing building something amazing that happens to already exist, it's just not my style. That out of the way, let's get into the actual build. Being that this lumber has significant personal value, I'll lop off the minimum that I need for this project. With a straight edge, I'll draw a line as parallel to the grain as I can and chop off that live edge at the bandsaw, keeping it as straight as possible, but it's not critical at this step. Next will be a few passes through the table saw, incrementally increasing the blade height until I get all the way through. Then I'll chop my board into a few pieces. Now it's worth noting that I haven't milled anything square yet at all. I'm just getting it down to a size that will fit on my joiner, and working with smaller pieces means that the joiner won't have to eat so much material to create a flat surface. So I'm roughing everything that I can before moving on to the true milling operations. Now I can joint two perpendicular edges on my three smaller pieces rather than one big one. You can't see my face that well here, but I'm frustrated. The location of the dust exhaust on the DeWalt planer droops right down where the work is expelled, so I have to run over and gently lift the hose each time so the wood doesn't knock it off. I hate doing this, and I've been telling myself to make an attachment that lifts it up and out of the way, but shit like wooden cheeseburgers and action films have gotten the best of my attention span. Needless to say, watch out for that in a pretty near future video. With that finished, I'll tilt my blade back 30 degrees and establish one mitered edge. Oh, I never told you, I'm going with a hexagon rather than a triangle. I'm sure there's some military code that says a flag should be folded one way and that it has to face a certain direction, but this is my shop, my grandfather, and my product, so I'll do what I want. With those miters down, I'll make these three pieces into six by cutting what will be the depth of the box. With a prettier side toward the fence, I'll cut a shallow groove which will end up accepting the front panel. For the opposite side that will house the back panel, I'll establish the furthest reach of a rabbit now, and then clamp a sacrificial fence so I can ride the blade right next to the fence to get the other side. This left me with a few fins to tackle with the chisel. Some of you might be thinking, why don't you just use a dado blade for that? Whenever a situation pops up where a dado blade would be helpful, I consider if the cleanup work and extra passes with the normal blade is enough work to warrant the entire setup procedure of the dado stack. In this case it wasn't, so I left it in the drawer. I'll go ahead and sand now and mask off the parts that will be getting glued, and go ahead and apply finish as, especially with the inside of the box, this will be much easier to do pre-assembly. Then I'm all set to create a tape hinge on the outside of each piece, and wrap it up with no glue. This allows me to measure for that front plexiglass panel. I'll make the first cut on the table saw, draw in the two 60 degree angles, and cut those on the bandsaw. Then with the fence still in the same place, I can finish the opposite edges back at the table saw. Now I'm ready to glue up, but something doesn't feel right. That's better. So, spread some glue in the seams, trying to go a little lighter toward the inside, where squeeze out would be hard to clean up and wrap the box up with the plexiglass sandwiched within. A glue up is not a true glue up unless you run off the screen to grab something to wipe. Everything dry, the next day I'll measure for the half inch plywood back panel and run the same process essentially that I did with the plexiglass. The flag should cover this panel completely, but I'll give the edge a hit of black paint just in case any of it wants to poke through. And sand that right off as I need wood to wood for the eventual final glue up. Everything sat in this state for over a week while I waited for this puppy to arrive. I got this on Etsy from Chicken Scratch Metalworks. I'll link in the description if you want to check out their catalog. 
Now this will be a first for me. I'm going to use UV resin to attach this to the front acrylic panel. And since I don't know exactly how this stuff works, I'm going to paint it onto the front of the insignia in the dark. And then carefully lower it into place. With this janky rig, I'll be able to shine a UV light through the acrylic front and cure the resin. With that done, I'll put my hexagon folded flag in, which was really hard to make. I can't say I recommend this fold. And then measure how low it sits under the back panel. I want to put a little pressure on it in the box so I lessen the chance of it drooping over time. Turns out a three quarter inch piece of plywood will be perfect. So I trimmed the edges and glued that to the inside of the back lid. With a very careful glue seam around the rabbit and some pressure to hold it down, she's all sealed up. Last thing before calling this project done is to drill some mounting holes, touch up the glue seams with some sanding, and reapply finish to those sanded areas. Here it is. Pretty unique and much less dusty and much more fitting of a home for Pop Pop's flag. Thanks for watching. See you next week.